very good morning good afternoon to everyone once again thank you so much for joining us today i am disha the marketing manager of emerald publishing and before we uh, introduce the session of uh, the speaker of today's session let me just give a quick very very quick uh, you know housekeeping tips the orange arrow uh, which is on your right hand side opens and closes the control panel uh, you know that takes care of the settings for uh, today's session you can change the audio option to your computer to your phone uh, all of the attendees microphones will be muted uh, please use the questions tab uh, to uh, to ask any questions for for the presenter uh, uh, one thing please because you are muted we will take we will have time at the end of the session to take questions so please take the questions um, uh, please please post your questions uh, and this session is being recorded a recording of this session will be uh, shared with the with all of you along with your, uh, along with your uh, certificate of attendance one second So before we begin, I'd like to invite Mrs. Shanika to please introduce today's speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much, Disha. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome you all to the last session of Research Mentoring Workshop as an extension of the Writing Impactful Research Program and a post-conference engagement of ICMR 2021. conducted by the faculty of management studies sabargamu university of sri lanka in collaboration with emerald publishing and the gulf medical university achman uae with great respect let me first welcome the main speaker of today's session professor vikas arya assistant professor international university of rabat rabat business school morocco today he is discussing the topic identifying and submitting your manuscript to a recognized journal with gratitude let me also welcome professor atul anyana pala dean faculty of management studies sabargamu university of sri lanka then with gratitude let me welcome professor jayanta and devasivi the main coordinator of this workshop series miss sangeeta menon publishing relationship manager Emerald Publishing and Professor Sudhir Rana from Gulf Medical University, UAE. Then, with gratitude, let me also welcome Ms. Deesha Lakhanpal, Regional Marketing Manager, Emerald Publishing Group. Then, with great respect, I would like to welcome all the distinguished participants from Emerald Publishing, Gulf Medical University, and Sabargamu University of Sri Lanka. finally the respected audience mainly of our academics from all the universities worldwide senior professors professors senior lecturers lecturers students and researchers are welcome to the program now i would like to introduce the main speaker of today's session and it's a great privilege for me to announce him dr vikas arya is a doctorate in digital brand management is a guest editor of a special issue of seven international journals listed in the scoopers and abdc category he has published papers in reputed journals such as international journal of information management journal of retailing and consumer studies and journal of global information management he published a number of articles in reputed journals in the abdc and scoopers index journals his core research and teaching interest are in consumer behavior brand management marketing communication destination branding digital mobile apps marketing brand building using using virtual platforms and communication in healthcare for his significant research contributions He recently received the Best Young Researcher Award from Global Education and Corporate Leadership Awards 2018. So, Dr. Vikas Arya, sir, it's all to you. Thank you, thank you, Professor Shanika, for introducing me and giving a detailed information about my profile. Though I'm really thankful to you and grateful to you for your award. and thank you very much professor sudhir and professor jayanta and uh, ms sangeeta menon to arrange all these things and uh, doing a very hard and extensive work 
to have this uh, exercise for month long or so i can understand there are a lot of things and a lot of hurdles you have faced but finally we are at end and i have a privilege to end this workshop with my session and i'm, I'm i would try my best to give my information or uh, update about the finding the journals to the audience and i'm sure they would like it in, in case if you get disappointed don't blame on me i'm trying my best well uh, uh, professor shanka how to share my screen i just want to know is already been shared uh, professor vikas what you have to do is you have to share your ppt now yes it is visible now okay that's great so we are going to figure out the journals hunting and uh, it, it is very i would say sometime it is very complicated task when you are a fresher or you you don't have any basic background about the research or maybe you you just started your phd but you don't know the outlet where you have to submit and how to figure out those things so i would discuss about that thing all, also but uh, first 10 15 minutes i have to share some information about the journals and publications globally what we are having around the world so i'm going to share some facts and this is a scopus data i have taken from the presentation of one person uh, who presented this particular data in a uh, uh, world rank forum uh, qs world rank forum held recently in morocco so he presented this data so i have requested him to use this data for this presentation so if we can see this this these are the area area wise people are publishing their articles from 2017 to 2021 so we can see here physical science is like 30 percent clinical preclinical science is 35 percent life science is 30 percent and of course engineering and technology is 20 percent but business and economy we are talking about this domain especially business and economy is still very low 15.3 percent and psychology it is really good 30 percent people are publishing in psychology whereas education is leading around the world education in this domain people are publishing around 44 percent articles have been published out of total number of articles published by different journals in the education sector people have published more articles so this information would help you to figure out what kind of articles uh, journals are entertaining most so this data is really important you can figure out that like middle east you can see here middle east is increasing over here these days they are on top almost uh, or close to top i would say they would surpass uk very soon whereas india is also approaching very fast and uh, you can see it's uh, it's almost close to middle east and uk as of now so these three uh, continents are having very tough competition all together now like as middle east uk and india we already have surpassed america africa and australia so this is of, of course australia is because of population you can see that but yes america was leading some uh, some time ago but uh, in last two to three years uh, middle east uk and india have reached far better than america in terms of number of publication if we talk about trends of the field weightage citation impact country wise or reason wise from 2012 to 2021 it's around uh, nine years data so we can see here once again middle east is on top whereas uh, china is almost close to middle east but uh, maybe in last one year or you can say during pandemic they have fall down but africa has improved a lot during pandemic this is really very surprising and of course in india also you can see that from 2019 to 2021 there is a direct increment maybe we have used pandemic time in a very positive way to get our publications or to improve our skills uh, for the publication so this is one one of the thing like uh, people have to figure out that uh, when there are a crisis time how to use those crises for your positive word or for, for your positive output so i would say middle east and especially india have done really very good during this pandemic africa also altogether this particular diagram would tell you the world percentage or percentage of share of articles uh, continent wise 
who are having those articles are like having very high field weighted citation impact so here australia is less in terms of number of publication but if we talk about article share and field weighted citation they are leading again uk and australia is on top then usa and china and europe whereas <coughs> middle east and africa is almost in same quarter and uh, india and latin america is also in same quarter so this is the graph you can see that yes australian universities and uk universities are giving more weightage to the research and that's why people those who are citing very high uh, or getting pub publications in very high weighted journals they are from the universities based in australia and uk in numbers you can see one more data here probably the second last data in terms of uh, worldwide calculation the data is talking about international collaborations level also like uh, uh, if if uh, i write a paper from morocco how many collaborators i have internationally from different countries and this is also very impactful or i would say this is also very useful criteria to have uh, international collaborations in your research and people do consider this thing as well if you have published 20 articles how many international collaborations you had in your those articles this is also countable sometimes and most high rank universities they give weightage to this particular thing as well so you can see africa and australia are again on top uh, to have a collaboration and also uk is also on top with 55 percent uh, after the australia and africa is 51 percent to have an international collaboration if we talk about uh, middle east they are around uh, close to 40 percent in terms of uh, uh, international partnership and india is very less as of now 18.9 percent or you can say 19 percent international collaborations we uh, i mean indian authors used to have and we have to improve this data if we want to have our ranking good or we want to have position or institute or university in front of the world at a very with a very positive note so we have to have a international collaborations we have to build our network and we have to connect with our with the authors those who are writing in the same area from different universities from different countries that would give more weightage to our uh, article and i would tell you one more thing that uh, how to help how these things help you to improve your citation as well so we will discuss about that too this particular uh, last figure or last data set in this domain is talking about open access research countries wise like from 2017 to 2021 and like there are different options these days gold open access or uh, paid journals or some some time of uh, uh, publication fees or something like that they, they used to charge so in, in terms of gold open access we can see here Africa is the second highest level of gold open access paper, 32% after Latin America, 34%. And India and China have the lowest in uh, gold open access. That means people from India, US and China, they are not uh, going to opt or they are not offering this particular option, gold open access, whereas Latin American people and African people are using this particular service where journals are giving gold open access uh, to the authors so now you would be interested to know okay what is the best way to search the correct journal so i would tell you first thing uh, trust me there is no such kind of key which i could give you and then you can write a paper and you can submit to one journal and then you would see yes uh, Professor Vikas told me this trick and this trick works a lot and I got my publication every author every author is having their own way one thing every journal is having their own way to judge your manuscript second thing and third thing is about your manuscript every manuscript is having their own way to influence the author or influence the reader as well including the chief editor so 
if I would tell you one trick, this is not uh, compulsory for all journals. Maybe the chief editor is having their own way of perception where the topic has already got uh, outdated or they have already published number of topic on one particular article. They might not be interested anymore on that topic because they have already published in last two three years they have already published some articles for example there are some journals a category journal they have published a lot of article on covid 19 but they said no no good enough now we are in 2022 middle of 2022 i would say end of 2022 we are no more talking about pandemic let's talk something else now so in last two years if you see their graph they have published a lot of paper in uh, in their journal you know, talking about pandemic and if you figure out that their aims and objectives are exactly matched with this particular topic if your paper is related to covid 19 somehow and you would get disappointed because uh, yes this is true they have published paper but this time they have decided not to go in this domain to touch another domain and there are many things at the back end uh, what why chief editor used to take this decision of course sometimes it's about citation sometimes it's about improving the power factor sometimes it's about going back with the original idea and so and so this is a kind of another data set like uh, why you have to publish a paper or why anyone would be interested to publish a paper if you have this idea then probably you can have a better idea to figure out the journal for yourself one thing is career so most of the academicians publish their paper because they just have a career requirement or they just have a compulsory requirement from their inner uh, um, employer so if you have this kind of requirement then maybe uh, there are certain way to figure out this requirement on immediate basis but there are some journals those who are very fast but uh, they are not very good in terms of rank or in terms of impact factor there you can target your paper to get immediate output because their process would be a bit fast and uh, not that much ingress as well i would say as compared to a star or a bs4 or four star rank journal there, there is another type of person called altruism. 85% of published uh, for esteem and to receive internal and external recognition. Like there are people, those who publish not for the establishment of their job or not for the career, their job is permanent. Uh, the career is established. They are already professor. They are already enjoying all these privileges. They don't have anything, ex any expectation based on the paper and the output from the organization in, with respect to the paper. But they publish because of the reputation, because of the recognition. And if your goal is reputation and recognition, then your set of journals would be different would be different from the journals those who are looking for the career opportunity or just looking for the establishment of their job and this time you would be talking about some high impact factor journals on which you can proud yes i, I have one publication in abs4 rank journal or i have publication in ft50 journal so these kind of journals would give you very much confidence and good recognition in your esteemed organization and in your community next is subject development most of the top universities in the world top universities when i talk about uh, like top 100 universities you can say the professors and scientists over there they publish paper or they develop the concept and paper because the because of the subject development not because of they need any recognition or they need any external benefit or they need this paper for career development because they are developing theories and when you are working in this direction when you are developing some theory you are developing some subject matter to the next level for the next generation or you are making a different concept now then probably the set target journals would be very much different for you and of course there are some set that journals they would only talk about subjective development if your article is talking about any subjective development then only they would entertain your paper otherwise if you are just sending uh, a quantitative study based on some four or five constructs you have taken you have written the literature the relationship and fix the gap also use smart pls or spss or amos whatever quantitative method you have used they will not entertain it doesn't matter your manuscript is not good 
it is about their focus is not about quantitative met methods their focus is not about uh, addressing the problem their focus is about development of theory subject development if you are mismatching this particular criteria then definitely those journals would not entertain you and the last category is on business like 50 percent published for company recognition and to promote their business as well so this is also like uh, i have visited one uh, organization here in rabat and it's a medical organization and they have a laboratory they they do experiments over there and they we, we really surprised they have published 70 articles um in last one year during pandemic uh, and it is really very good output for them because they are getting recognition for their business whatever research whatever study whatever experiments they are doing in their laboratories they are making those articles published to get recognition in their market and this is a business for them now this is really very important to figure out what are the criteria to figure out the journal first first very basic criteria i would say is impact factor you have to identify the impact factor of the journal and sometimes like in, in some universities if we talk about top universities they would give you some uh, limitation with blue circle like as if you remember uh, for your driving license you you could say that uh, uh, red circle is about warning you cannot go beyond 50 kilometer per speed but if 50 is written with blue circle that means your minimum speed should be 50. so same way same kind of rule organizations are having these days whatever journal or whatever article you are publishing your minimum impact factor should be 1.5 or 2 or 2.5 or something like that even in my organization also we, we don't entertain any journal for our recognition if the if the impact factor is less than 1.5 and uh, of course we do have different criteria also uh, but less than 1.5 impact factor is not at all acceptable i mean you can have in your cv but not for recognition in the university they would not count as a published article for in, in your bucket this is something like very important and uh, of course there is a scopus criteria as well uh, first thing is whether the journal is listed in scopus or not and there are many predatory journals as well i'm not going to talk about this thing uh, how to identify the predatory journal but i would certainly and uh, with, with great responsibility i would like to suggest you not to get in touch with any kind of predatory journal if someone is offering you like uh, some some thousands of indian currency or some like uh, 100 us dollar or 200 us dollar they would uh, make your paper publish in 10 days 15 days one month or so and you could report this paper as a requirement for your study or for your phd requirement or maybe for your um, university requirement this may be temporary trust me this may be temporary requirement which you could fulfill by these predatory journals but the point is if you the with respect to the time your profile would get increased and you don't know whether if you are in the same university after five years they would fire you because you have published in a predatory journal and this is happening i i cannot name some universities but this is happening around the world they have fired people because the people have published in predatory journal and uh, university recognized that this is not acceptable you we, you cannot avail the promotion uh, uh, after getting publication in predatory journals and either they demotivate uh, uh, demotivate them or they just remove their uh, promotion or they, they just fire them so these kind of things are going on in the market so don't ever get engaged with predatory journals try to avoid all these things i would say no try to avoid just avoid all predatory journals to save your profile for long maybe for phd uh, at mo at this moment you would save your phd degree but uh, once you would be in a job that time you don't know you may get a job as an assistant professor but if you are trying to get a job as a associate professor or professor or let's say after 10 years if you are trying to put yourself as a dean research or dean of anything in any discipline 
in an organization they might scrutinize your profile and because of one silly mistake in your career they will give this opportunity to, to someone else who is better than you so this is something like happening so come back to, to this impact factor though scopus is having their own database as well this is a website i found on google researchify.com you can type journal and you can find the impact factor though this particular website is not having the information for all journals and for this you need to go to the scopus database to download that and then you can check the data of course there is one more site and that is uh, scimagosea.com over here you just have to type the journal name and they would tell you whether the journal is listed in scopus or not and what is the h index of this journal sometimes when uh, your university is having a requirement just to have a scopus journal only then they would also talk about h index or they would also talk about uh, q1 q2 or q3 what is the rank of this journal so in, in some universities only q1 is acceptable in some universities q2 and q3 rank journals are also acceptable like as uh, I, if i talk about indian scenario uh, we we expect uh, authors uh, to get publication in uh, abdc rank journal and scopus rank journal altogether if we talk about uh, uae and uh, arab Emirates contacts then uh, people or university over there prefer <coughs> scopus rank journal if we talk about american continent uh, then they talk about abdc rank ft50 or abdc one abdc abdc star b category c category or uh, So these kind of things also happen like continent wise these things get uh, changed even in uh, in, uh, in our university we, we do consider only ABS rank journal so we, we don't bother about ABDC we don't bother about Scopus even in Europe you would find France and uh, Germany they also talk about ABS rank journal only so this type of requirement would get different from one continent to another continent and why i'm sharing this information with you you have to make a balance with respect to all these categories some journals may be abdc a category but in abs they would be uh, abs2 category they would not be abs3 or four star i don't want to name journals but there are journals like they are in good position in abdc category but in abs rank they are two like as IGIM or uh, IG, uh, IGCS. So these journals are ABDC A or A star as well, but in ABDC, ABS category, they are two. But if you're trying to move your career from Asian continent to Europe continent, you have to make a balance with ABS three category journals. If you're trying to move your career from Europe continent to um, uh, UAE side then you have to make a balance with Scopus rank journal so this particular calculation is really very important to understand in which continent what kind of criteria is on most priority like as if you are looking for USA you want to get settled over there they would talk about only ABDC rank journal they would not ask you how many paper you have in Scopus Q1 Q2 or Q3 they would talk about how many papers you have in ABDC A or A star that is their criteria in top universities they would ask only one thing how many papers you have in uh, ft50 and there are some journal some universities i would say in in france as well they only talk about if you have a paper in abs ft50 if you have one or two paper in ft50 then only send your resume for consideration otherwise don't waste your time and our time as well they, they clearly mention on their website please send your resume if you have any ft50 article in your bucket so simple so if you are trying to move forward in this continent you have to figure out their requirement as well that's why i shared these things maybe uh, okay we have a time so maybe we can check this uh, first, first basic thing is google scholar i would say always to the community please have your google profile uh, Google Scholar profile. It's just like when you search on Google, it is something like simple. When you search on Google, just type Google Scholar and you will have a Google Scholar 
with this sign i hope my uh, window is visible to you if anyone could confirm please it is visible uh, professor okay so you can have a google scholar profile and then they, it will ask you if you are the first time user it will ask you to uh, give access to your email id and all so that they would create uh, create this profile for you or they would uh, merge your gmail account with this google profile and then you can have a profile like this how many papers you have published and so on so on who are those authors or something like that you can have easily though i don't have uh, for the details over here but the important thing is this google scholar let's say you are searching for green marketing so you can see that green marketing is having around uh, 31 uh, 3100000 articles already on on their bucket so people are already talking about green marketing from 1992 so if if first thing uh, i would say if you are trying to figure out the journal about your publication first try to figure out whether you have select the correct topic for your publication or not maybe you have landed with a wrong topic which is already outdated or maybe people are not interested or maybe people have already published lot of article on this then sorry then you have to figure out this issue uh, very carefully whether the article you wanted to publish in a journal or you are looking for the journal for the same have any value addition to the existing journal or value addition after having the existing papers in the same journal or not if there is no extra additional value added by your paper or by your manuscript to the journal then why they would be interested in your manuscript this is the question you have to ask first before submitting the article to any journal if they have already published article on similar idea what is new in that case and this is really very complicated it's not at all very easy to figure out the research gap and that's why i would say most of the paper get rejected from the test level uh, editorial test level or chief editor test itself because of this issue they are not able to address the research gap according to the journal's requirement maybe you have a very good research gap but this research gap either not in the scope of the journal uh, or maybe not in the uh, maybe the journal has already published lot of paper on this research gap so in that case what would be your criteria how you are going to figure out to fit your paper in this journal and the choice is yours either to go ahead with the same topic which is already exhausted or to figure out new topic or to make some new connection or new research gap with the same construct to influence the uh, uh, chief editor i mean influence means to in uh, impress the chief editor with your idea this is something important and also when you are searching something like uh, based on keyword you are looking for the articles uh, journals who have published articles on green marketing then try to search on google scholar and then try to figure out what kind of journals they uh, publish articles on green marketing of course here there are different type of journals we are getting but we are going to target in 2022 so we have to pick the dimensions also the range i would say custom range if i say from 2021 to 2022 then i would get exact idea which kind of journals are publishing articles on green marketing so there is one journal international journal of consumer studies igcs it's again the a category journal in abdc scopus q1 rank journal uh, i guess this is mdpi and i i won't recommend people to submit their paper in mdpi because there are many universities around the world they would not consider your paper published if you publish in a mdpi uh, publisher or journals based in mdpi i'm not against this publisher but if the concept is paid journal 
if you are making a payment to get your paper published then they would not consider that paper as a published article in your bucket if there if you find any md pay journal which is not asking any money then i would suggest you to go ahead but if they are asking money in any form please try to avoid them i'm not against their business model but it is about your uh, profiling how you are going to make your profile uh, to influence the good universities so we, we have figured out another journal here that is journal of business ethics it is ft50 journal ab abdc a star i guess and is corpus q1 ft50 is of course abdc a star must be that there you can figure out another journal strategy and marketing uh, something like that let me check what is this journal yeah business strategy and then environment it's again abs3 rank journal so by this way like you can really figure out which are those journals those who are publishing articles on this topic and then of course you might figure out some journals which are not listed anywhere or might be very new to you then you have to go back with your database like abdc rank journal list of abdc rank and list of abs rank then you could figure out whether journal is listed in abdc abs or scopus and to be very safe or to play very safe on this side i would always suggest you to check your journal whether your journal is listed in any two category there are three categories worldwide mostly they consider either abdc rank or abs rank or scopus so you have to check whether your pay article or sorry your journal target journal is listed in any two category like as must be in abdc and scopus or must be abdc and abs or must be scopus and abs these are the three combinations you could have but you always have to check this thing so that any point of time if you are trying to put your cv to the international domain they would help you or they would consider your paper okay we don't consider scopus rank journal but do your paper your journal is in abdc rank or abs rank also then maybe we can consider your uh, journal for the recruitment process or for the for your candidature process this is one way to figure out <clears throat> uh, Okay, I can show you this website as well. This is um, SCI Magosia website. Like as you wanted to search uh, Journal of Consumer Studies. So yes, International Journal of Consumer Studies is there. The publisher is Wiley and this particular journal is from UK. You can find here, you can find other details also. Like as H index is 77, it is very high rank journal, probably B category journal, or uh, a, actually it's a A category journal. Scopus Q1 must be. Yeah. International Journal of Consumer Studies is a Scopus Q1 rank journal. So here you can check this particular data and record also, like how they are improving and what kind of collaboration rate they have. Of course, this information as a co author is not important for you. But yes, sometimes you can check uh, citation per document whether the journal is improving in this area or not and this is really very important for you whether people are citing the paper published in these journals or not if a journal is really good but people are not citing their paper in further that means the citation per document is really very low that means what you will not get good citations if you will publish paper in this journal this is really important for you to understand because uh, when you are in this domain in 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 the domain of publication uh, when you have a good number of publications and another candidate is also having same number of publications then they would filter your profile based on your number of citation this is a game actually next level of game uh, or i would say next level of filtration of profile how many people have trusted on your document how many people have find your studies uh, your study or your publications are good for the society and how to measure this they are good for the society or they are making sense in the society because people are citing those paper 
and if people are citing those papers then that means they are giving value to your study your study is giving some contribution to the rest of the world and this is really important to figure out like whatever the citation per document is increasing uh, overall for this journal okay we can go back i will show you the list of journals as well there are journals list ranking you can say web of science avdc abs list especially these lists are uh, mostly fa uh, famous around the world and you can download these lists uh, let's say you want to download abdc list so you just have to click and even if you search on google also you can find that uh, if you type uh, download google abdc rank journal okay this link is giving some error abdc list 2019 you are here and yes oh and this is a report i downloaded by mistake sorry there is a link to download the list as well export full list yes so this would be in excel shape excel format so here the list is available and you have to make some arrangement as well because it is not in a perfect shape so you have to give a proper balance and this is important for me i'm exactly looking for this column rating which journal has given what kind of rating abdc a category c category b category or a star of course ft50 list is not given over here for for that you have to figure out on on google like what are those journal listed in ft50 so mostly top rated journals from the abdc list based on some impact factor based on number of citations they have got in a year or in last three years they used to disclose this ft50 list and all these things are uh, rotated on, on rotatory basis like abdc list is getting update in all four years so based on the criteria journal is doing good or not they would promote or they would degrade degrade the journal category as well so this is about abdc list and i would always suggest to begin with go with the c category publications and then slowly and gradually move your confidence and submit your paper in a category or b category what else would happen don't feel hesitate my manuscript is not good people would laugh on me of course people would laugh on you if, if your manuscript is not good but what does it affect you you would get some feedback at least if you submit a paper in a category or a star category then they would read your paper and they would give some comments and improve those comments and then submit in in a category let's say you wanted to submit a paper in b category so i always wanted to submit a paper in b category then always submit this paper in a category knowing that they are going to reject my paper straight away i know but they would give me some comments which i would improve and then i would submit in b category and then for b category it is already refined because of the reviewers those who reviewed my paper for the a category journal they have given me sufficient advice to save my paper in a better way uh, so sir i was trying to read your comments in in the chat box so this is abdc list you in the same way you have you can download abdc abs list also and you can go with uh web of science structure as well like what are the web of science structure now how to select right journal this is like after having a list in your bucket uh, abs list abdc list or so and so you have to figure out the journal 
let's say you have figured out five journals or six journals for your manuscript probable publication outlet for you you have to figure out journals those who reduce the delay in publication there are some journals trust me there are some journals those who take more than two years to publish your article and what is the point uh, i really don't understand why chief editors are not so active or uh, maybe the team is not so active or maybe the purpose is something else or the review process is very rigorous or so or so there could be n number of reasons but if they are taking two and a half years to publish a paper the manuscript which i have finished in 2022 i started probably working on that manuscript in 20 or 2021 that means the data is from 2020 and this manuscript is getting published in 2024 and who is going to cite this paper maybe i'm working on a covid 19 and covid 19 in 2024 would be over no one would be writing paper on covid 19 no one would be publishing paper on covid 19 but if your paper is getting published which you have submitted now is getting published in 2024 that means what you are not going to get citation on your timely research so this is very important criteria you have to figure out the uh, time duration for the journal is taking you have to figure out the right audience as well whether you are targeting right audience right audience means who are those people those who are going to see my paper if published in this journal let's say you are from the medical background and you are publishing a paper somewhere in a consumer psychology journal so consumer psychology uh, is something like uh, people from the uh, uh, behavioral science they would read your paper but you sorry but you are from the medical field that means you would not get the rich audience for your journal or for your publication that means you have to figure out the journal which would be good having good impact and good awareness in your knowledge in your area and second thing is which would enhance your reputation so reputation is like very important why you publish paper not because they are getting publication easily in this journal if journal is not having good reputation no need to waste your time over there and of course every journal is having their own reputation i'm not denying that but with respect to the quality of the journal try to manage your area or try to manage your um, expectation according to the uh, standard of your journal or manuscript Factor to be considered are relevant readership, reach or reach of the journal, where like uh, uh, how many uh, how many people are reading this particular article or how many citations this particular journal is getting. This is all about reach of the journal. If the journal is getting very high citation, that means number of people are going to your study. Number of people are noticing the paper published in this particular journal third point is likelihood of acceptance how likely the journal is very good to accept the manuscript there are some journals the acceptance rate is around eight to ten percent yes i'm right even less than that as well some journals some journals claim that they have around six percent acceptance rate so this is what you have to decide whether you wanted to target that type of journal where the acceptance rate is very low and of course if the acceptance rate is very low journal would be having very high standard and for that reason they might take the review times or rejection time uh, very low a long time to reject your paper or they might reject your paper within a week or so you have to figure out this way like which one is really good for you or whether you can wait for one year two year or six months or four months based on the based on their previous track how many times how much time they are taking to accept the manuscript time from submission to publication so you submitted a manuscript today and they are going to publish a manuscript in which year there are some special issue i would tell you they have some special issue and they say oh, we would publish your article in mid of 2024 i mean if i submit the article directly to the journal that means journal would publish my article faster than the journal is having a special issue 
and it is up to you whether you want to go with this channel you have a time bandwidth to wait till 2024 or you want to you want your published article to get published by 2022 or 2023 maximum so it is up to you like whether you are in a position to wait uh, for me it, it is like the criteria is like if i have a good manuscript and i know that this manuscript deserves to have a good uh, place then I, I i won't mind to wait for one and a half year two years also if we talk about main publishers we have some name to follow like taylor francis elzevia emerald sales publications and inner science springer science direct i might miss a few more as well but yes the list is go uh, move on like that but the point is if we go about uh, taylor francis i would take you to the website first so this is the website of taylor francis you have to log in you have to create your account and then probably you can access more journals but you can see here um, around 48 lakhs journals or articles they have already published taylor francis is talking about this thing if i talk about same keyword this would give me the results and the result is like uh, around 1,62,000 or 162 uh, 162,000 articles are already published on green marketing in taylor and francis so the point is how to figure out the journal in taylor and francis for your study the every publisher is having a i would say journal finder uh, or journal suggest uh, kind of platform where you just have to type some keywords and they would suggest you some journals based on that keyword so maybe sometimes they ask you to put the entire abstract as well so they there is a system and no one is going to read your abstract but there is an algorithm they just pick some keywords famous keyword in your abstract or in your Five to ten lines and they would suggest you based on those keywords they would suggest you some art uh, probable journals those are using same kind of keywords and publishing articles so based on green marketing there are journals those who are publishing articles so you may have to filter further whether the journal is listed in abdc category abs category scopus category or not this finder would tell you okay based on these keywords these are the journals you can target but whether these journals are authenticated whether these journals are under your uh, university requirement or not sometimes as i said the requirement is up to 1.5 impact factor must be there so there must be a minimum impact factor so if these journals are not having those impact factor then this finder would not help you you have to go back again and search another way uh, how to figure out the journals so these are the different type of uh, 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 journal finders you could find like as emerald is also having a similar way okay you have to select the area let's say education subject area a lot of things i mean you can do these kind of filter and you can get a lot of information about this journal criteria but the basic thing i would come back again when you get free time and this is a home exercise actually i would say before uh, submitting a paper or before writing a paper or before becoming a pure researcher this particular exercise you all should have done and that is filter your journals based on your interest area try to have the list of those journals those 50 70 journals in in your excel file in a separate excel file or word file those who publish same kind of articles uh, on which you are writing let's say i'm writing on consumer behavior i'm writing on social media marketing so i know there are around 20 25 journals in abs free rank journal those who publish paper in this particular area or if the criteria is only to target abs3 rank journal or abs2 rank journal then have this filtration or have this list of filtered journals in your bucket 
to save your time in in a better way last thing i would like to add on here dealing with rejection uh, you know this guy i would give you 10 second to recall your name uh, recall the name of this person yes some of you may be right and some of you would be having a different idea this is thomas elva edison he got failed many times when he was trying to develop a bulb but he said i have not failed i have just found 10000 ways that won't work for me so i have figured out like if i want to go to london and i'm moving towards uh, from india i'm moving towards sri lanka I'm moving towards australia i'm moving towards dubai then i would figure out that if i would go in this way that way that way i would not be able to reach london this is what is the research is actually so rejection don't get disappointed you got rejection from this journal from that journal from that journal that means your manuscript is not good or maybe people are not interested in your work this is something like on the topic you are working the topic on which you are working is not suitable for this journal so next time please avoid submitting a similar type of manuscript on the same topic or on the same theme in this journal this is one way which would not work for you reasons for rejection author guideline every journal is having some author's guideline please i would say once again please go through these guidelines very carefully very carefully means sometimes they tell you okay the manuscript should not be more than 8000 words and if your manuscript is around uh, 11000 words they would reject your manuscript straight away without giving any reasons or most of the time the reason is copy paste copy paste means mm, they would give you the basic reason your uh, research gap is not good your theory is not good and this and this and blah and blah but these kind of statements are fulfilled or correctly perfect for any manuscript any manuscript blindly so they might give you this kind of uh, way to reject your manuscript or they may say say uh, the manuscript is not in our scope in our scope means it doesn't mean your manuscript is not in their scope because of the topic it is because of the length of the manuscript so length of the manuscript is also important poor english is also important if your english standard is not appropriate as the journal is expecting then they may say the manuscript is not in our scope because they are expecting a kind of manuscript which is having a very high standard or similar standard of english people are publishing in these journals so there may be i would say again there may be different scope and aims and objective journals is having you have to figure out the way how to reduce the chances of getting your manuscript rejected at this level and i would say 50 to 70 percent manuscript get rejected at this level itself because of not following the author's guideline so always try to read those guidelines try to check what what kind of reference style they have asked try to check what kind of requirements they are expecting what kind of word limit what kind of style of abstract they are expecting what kind of english they are expecting then prepare your manuscript and then submit and of course don't forget to cite some articles from the same journal or uh, the author or the editor have published any article related to your area don't forget to cite those articles also in your manuscript that would help the editors or the chief editor or the associate editor or guest editor to understand you have gone through the aims and objectives of our paper of our journal in a very detailed way in in bullet point if i would say you have to search uh, how to select the journal you have to search journal on google scholar with keywords select journals publishing on related topics now, those are publishing on a related topic check the authenticity of the journal whether the journal is not predatory not paid journal journal is having some ranking and index also like as listed in abdc listed in scopus or abs rank time taken for the published article also check this thing check the time taken for the review also for the journal then try to put your manuscript in that journal this is what i would say at the end and uh, yes this is a very blind area publication is a very wide area i would say not blind very wide area where you might have a very good piece of manuscript 
but if it is not in a very standard way or the journal is expecting it is really very hard to figure out the journal for your manuscript it is something like you have a key in your hand you have a key in your hand and you are looking for the perfect lock where your key can fit well and if your key is not in a well structured with proper cut and shape and so and so then it would not get entered inside the lock this is what is the reality is so i would say one more thing at the end before submitting any article in a journal try to download some paper some five to ten papers from the journal and read those article very carefully and reading is of two types first is content i'm not going to read the suggest you to read the entire con <coughs> sorry it's very cold here i'm extremely sorry for this so I'm not going to tell you read the entire content line by line but try to go through the draft <laughs> the draft or the procedure they have used to write a manuscript what is the structure of the manuscript most of the article published in the same journal have used whether <laughs> open window i guess a little bit this will help me yes so go through this structure go through the structure whether they are using <coughs> i don't know what happened anyway the structure is really important and uh, i would like to wind up here if you have any question or suggestion please do let me know yes uh, there are few questions uh, probably. <coughs> so yes thank you very much for your wonderful session so uh, there is a one question uh, please explain the difference between the gold open access journals and paid journals okay so paid journal is Uh, sorry <laughs> so gold up uh, yeah yeah professor sudhir is here he uh, he would yeah, yeah. Sorry, answer this you, question you want to take yes. a while i think this is a very general question i can address on your behalf yes, yes i mean yes, yes, take, yes, a yes, take a while please take a take a water you have taken this session with such such a um i mean call call cough i we really really appreciate really appreciate so gold open access journal is a journal where i'm responding this answer on behalf of my friend yes, uh, yes. So the, where apc is not there and somebody else is paying for you and the other open uh, op paid journal in a way we we say that where author is uh, paying the fee for the processing so this is known as apc based journal where you bear the publication fee and when somebody else be for you, it's come as a golden opportunity. It's a golden open access. Yeah. Yes. If you you're exactly correct, uh, <laughs> Professor Deer. Thank you very much for your answer. So I would like to add something to that actually. So when it comes to open access journals, we can see that uh, there are platinum open access journals, gold open access journals, and other open access journals as well. So when it comes to platinum open access, that is free for both readers and authors. So as authors, you do not need to pay. And for the readers, there is no subscription that is free. So that is a purely open access model. Uh, in addition to that gold open access. So if you consider that, so as is stated by Professor Sudhir correctly, so um, uh, the author uh, himself or herself uh, do not need to pay, but someone else is paying. It can be the publisher, it can be the institution who own the journal. So when it comes to the other models, so author paid journals are also available. Uh, in addition to that, subscription based journals are also available. Thank you very much for your uh, answer, Professor Sudhir. So the okay. second question, yes, uh, Professor Vikas. Yes, I want to make this very simple for the new researcher. 
no need to pay from your pocket if you are a fresher if you are a phd scholar if your institute there are some universities like not my university pay for gold access but there are some universities in europe in france in germany even in usa also maybe in dubai also or uae what is the purpose for gold open access like university will make sure that your paper is available free of course to everyone and when your manuscript is available free of course to everyone there would be high download and when people can download your paper freely they would cite your paper in numbers and that would help the university to improve the citation not from the uh, professor side only but for for the university profile like as individually i got 200 citations in this year but overall the university has got 2500 citations collectively so their rank would get improved in qs world ranking so they for this uh, criteria they want to ensure that the paper you are publishing if the paper is in good journal they would pay this money and they would make your journal available free of course to everyone so that anyone can download and it would help people to download and to cite your paper in their manuscript thank you very much indeed uh, we are celebrating the open access week from this 24th to 31st october in each year uh, at the end of october we are celebrating the open access week in order to motivate researchers uh, for the open access journals so as is stated by professor vikas correctly so it will enhance the readability visibility number of citations um, uh, if you are proceeding with open access so uh, the second question uh, are paid journals and predated journals are same no actually i would not say no uh, paid journals if you uh, please excuse me professor i'm going to name a journal if you say sustainability journal from mdpi it is a paid journal but it is not predatory journal predatory journal is something like fake journal journals like uh, i do have a journal name uh, vikas arya international journal of vikas arya this journal is not listed anywhere it, it doesn't mean it is a fake journal i might have originally listed this journal somewhere in a local publishing house i might not have listed this journal my journal in scopus or abdc or maybe it is listed in ugc rank journal or local governing body in your respective country but it doesn't mean it is a fake journal or predatory journal predatory journal would be there i have a journal and someone else has opened the uh, same journal with the same name trying to get the money from the people saying that i'm the original journal it is something like duplicacy of the original journal whereas paid journal is something like they are already exist they have registered somewhere on scopus in abdc and they are asking money from people to pay then only they would publish their paper recently i was trying to submit a paper in a abs3 rank journal i don't want to name that and i was really surprised the moment uh, i have uploaded all my documents and at the end i all uh, i figured out that they wanted me to pay around uh, 500 euro Oh, sorry 850 euro they want me to pay just to re, uh, make sure that their uh, my paper would chief editor would read my paper it is not the guarantee whether chief editor would send my paper to the review or not he he is having full authority to reject my paper at this level itself but this is a fee he is asking to ensure that uh, they could uh, they could send your paper to the reviewer they would invest your time uh, their time on your paper to read whether paper is good or not but this is not a paid journal they are not asking to uh, have a payment in terms of the publication they are not guarantee at all they are not doing any guarantee giving any guarantee this is a kind of processing charge processing fee they are asking so this processing fee is something else from the fee people are asking to make sure your paper would be published online i hope i'm clear yes of course you are clear 100 percent clear so i would also add something to your answer yes. so when it comes to um, uh, the predatory and clone journals so as the example given by professor vikas so it is all about the uh, corporate governance and ethics of the journal so if the journal is not uh, proceeding with relevant ethical guideline 
so you can say that that would be a kind of a predatory or clone journal because uh, editor himself he cannot proceed with i mean apc charges and all so it should be separated from the uh, editorial process the editorial managers are there in order to handle that editors are not handling apcs so that should be separated as per the ethical guidelines of the journals so um, in addition to that there is another uh, question say, same kind of a question uh, what is the difference between predatory and clone journal so um, i would like to add something to that actually yes, yes. Uh, so um, predatory journals are uh, kind of fake journals uh, we can see uh, with fake titles so when it comes to the clone journals that is different from that because we can consider clone journals as a mirror image of a reputed journal so in order to attract more articles uh, so they pro proceed with the mirror image of a actual journal for an example we could remember that in early 2022 uh, the journal of positive uh, school psychology there was a journal called that that is a scopus index journal so there was a clone journal for that they have uploaded around 3000 articles in it last four issues so that uh, they were charging and later on only they have realized that there is a clone journal for this so that is a mirror image so when it comes to predatory that is a fake that has a fake title fake um, websites and all so um, do you have anything to tell uh, professor sudhir or professor vikas okay no, so yeah, uh, rightly said the clone is like creating a seminal website and putting the name of the original yes. journal so but just to avoid like somebody from the facebook account create a face fake profile for your name the same way yes of course thank you i would sir. add on here just to avoid from this pred predatory and fake journals uh, complex issue always check the journal is listed in abdc list and scopus list also and always try to have your publication in a reputed journals only try to learn more don't figure out that uh, i cannot learn more and this is a very basic manuscript of course uh, every manuscript every researcher started from every basic level every researcher was blank at one point of time but they improved they learned a lot they invested their time on this skill and then they then they learn to uh, write a paper do this thing and try to up skill yourself and uh, as i have shown you the emerging countries especially all these emerging countries are improving their status in research just because people have this jet and jill to publish articles in good and reputed journals so use those resources to figure out uh, the reputed journals don't try to submit your manuscript in uh, uh, un unreputed journals or unreputed means unrecognized journals so uh, the next question So Scopus index journals, even in Q1, have impact factor less than 1.5. Is impact factor so important to be considered? Uh, like as uh, in, in my context, it is very important uh, because my university don't consider any journal because of Scopus listed or Q1 ranking listed. They consider only journal if the impact factor is more than 1.5. And there is a different body who decide in back vector there is a different body who decide whether the journal would be in scopus q1 q2 or q3 so it is something like you are trying to check uh, the list of abdc and abs together or abdc and scopus list together so it is like up to you or your university criteria whether you wanted to go ahead with the scopus q1 q2 q3 rank status or you want to go ahead with the impact vector but i would suggest you as i said try to have a balance in your publication try to have a balance so that if any point of time you want to move from one university or one comfort zone to another complicated zone so that people could recognize your publications equally so i have a question for professor Sudhir. so since you are on board today so what are the drawbacks of submitting abstract to search for a journal so are there any drawbacks you see in submitting an abstract to editor-in-chief 
so uh, before the submission well the drawback can be that making out a decision only on the basis of abstract is really really tough honestly because editors would like to have a feel of how the manuscript is structured organized and overall written and what is the overall flow because generally it happens is that we give a lot of emphasis on the abstract we make it impressive crisp and generally the manuscript is not like that so i experienced many times when others send me an abstract they send a very beautiful abstract and when i ask them to send a full paper the full paper is actually very hollow compared to the abstract so i would always suggest if you're checking up with any editor it is important to win over their heart and mind not to have disappointments send them the full paper and they would like to check how is the overall organization of the paper is i mean uh, so, so i have received so many comments from the audience stating that um, uh, they appreciate your contribution despite of your health condition professor arya yeah. Most welcome, uh, sir. Thank you very much. Well, it's just like uh, I don't know. I, I'm allergic with few things, and all of all of a sudden, sometimes I start sneezing, and maybe uh, it was very early morning. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes it happens. Yes, we, we are very very thankful. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, suppose we are not able to submit, revise, and resubmit response. Will it be treated as something not good by the journal later? Absolutely. You know uh, that somebody has invested their time and effort for free, just as a community service. The reviewers reviewed your manuscript. The editors have given time, so you have utilized somebody else's resources for your benefit. So I really do not admire the idea of submitting to a journal and utilize their resources and then not submitting them back. Many others do it that, OK, let me go to because see budding journals always give you very, very good review because these budding journals need to grow from one level to another level. And therefore, they, they follow a lot of uh, they, they do a lot of efforts on getting the average manuscript get converted into the above average papers. Uh, therefore, many authors take that the advantage of sending to these editors and then taking advantage of their review resources, which is not really good. I mean, I think if any editor will remember that you're not a serious author, they will they will not process your manuscript next time. Simple. They will remember that, oh, this is the person, uh, scholar, who have submitted a manuscript and have not submitted the revised version. So they take and, it. Uh, I yes. have another side of a story also, uh, Professor Sudhir, if you allow. Please, please, please. Uh, if if you receive reject and resubmit, then it is an opportunity for you. It is an opportunity for you to revise your manuscript and resubmit once again, so that chief, chief editor would be polite to you because they have they might have straight away say rejected. Why they have given you a chance reject and resubmit? That means they have seen some potential in your manuscript, and if you submit this manuscript somewhere else. They would not they would consider this manuscript as a fresh entry but this time if you resubmit again they would consider you as a already known conversation or already a conversation has been established since last five or eight months because uh, these five or eight months you have not seen your manuscript uh, maybe more than 10 times but chief editor have seen your manuscript more than 20 40 times to select the reviewers to send them reminders to send the notification to you also to get your manuscript so he was completely involved in your manuscript he knows your manuscript more than you in last eight months he has taken care of your manuscript in last eight months and he, he wanted to give you one more chance because of some reason uh, the reviewers were not agree with you they have rejected your manuscript and he's not having any chance to uh, any any other choice but to reject your manuscript but he wanted to give one more chance to you so that he sent you an email reject and resubmit so this is an opportunity for you not to miss over to you professor Jan. Yes, sir. There is another question. Uh, is predatory and clone channel are same? We answered that question. So, uh, can you please tell us more about the open access week given by Emerald Publishing? So, if if there is uh, the, 
So, uh, Disa, are you there? <coughs> Open Access Week that is celebrated by the Globe. So, Emerald is also having their own agenda in order to ce celebrate the Open Access Week. So, this time, uh, as Emerald, we are going to uh, uh, focus on few myths about the Open Access. So if you tune with uh, the social media pages of Emerald Publishing from this week onwards, you will be able to see so um, why and how Emerald is uh, focusing and promoting open access uh, models uh, in publishing. For an example, when you proceed with open access, you can uh, promote the inclusion, equity, and also equality uh, in research. So this are, it is over to you. So one of the participants is asking about um, the Open Access Week uh, celebrated by Emerald Publishing. OK, um, I have a lot to say. I will try to uh, shorten it as, as much as possible. Honestly, uh, uh, Open Access has become a very, very big priority for Emerald in the recent years. Uh, if you don't know, you can go to our, uh, our website. You can just. Uh, look for Emerald Open, um, uh, Emerald Open because that is the platform that we have. It is based on the F1000. We are accepting, uh, you know, uh, open access publication, and you can actually use the use that platform and publish your research. The second uh, way is we we already have, uh, you know, 100% open access journals where you can publish your research. And apart from that, also we have uh, platinum open access journals where an institution is running the entire. Um, uh, I mean, the uh, Professor Devasri is has one uh, himself. He's he's part of the journal where the institution pays, but you can you can get your open access uh, article published there for free. There is no article processing charges at all. Uh, through those platinum platinum open access, I think Emerald is now at almost what we have 75 to 80 journals uh, within this this uh, uh, form of uh, uh, you know uh, I mean access where you don't need to pay article processing fee. Also, you can get your uh, uh, you know open access articles paid for free, and also you have on all other uh, journals that we have. They are hybrid. You can you can it is your um, uh, you know. Uh, you, your decision whether you want to put, do it open access or not, even if they are paid journals, you if you feel that you want to flip it to open access, any journal you are, it is, it is you are free to get it published open access in any any journal with an Emerald as well. So you can choose any. So these are the ways we are supporting open access through publication. Now for open access week, uh, honestly, for this month, what we have done is we are trying to break myths around open access and each week we are actually going to launch a few videos done by a few people which are they are editors they are authors they are people you know uh, our uh, publishing director they are all going to talk about one myth per week and each week even this week we've launched our first myth and uh, we are releasing the videos as well people are coming and talking about that myth you know what what people think that oh you know maybe um, uh, there is no uh, there is there is nothing will come back to us or as an author if you are doing open access um, uh, publication but it's not like that so we are trying to include conversations around OA and have a very, very open conversation on how it is really good and you can go ahead and do it. It's not, you know, don't fall for pediatric journals. Please go to proper publishers, good publishers who will help you publish your open access article and, and definitely it's going to be benefit for you and other researchers across the planet. Thank you very much for your insight for this hour. So um, the next question for you, Professor Arya, is it impossible to have a full paper published on the same study if an abstract has already been published? Abstract is published where? This so, is the point. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. normally, yeah. Jour normally journals would yeah. not publish only abstract, only conference would publish abstract for you. So conference, if any conference have published abstract in the conference proceeding, still you have a full right to publish a paper, full length paper in any journal. And these days, most of the conferences, I would say 80 to 90% reputed conferences, they only publish 
abstract only for the conference proceeding. And this is a normal structure, normal uh, requirement to have a conference. You have to publish at least one conference book proceeding and there they are including only abstract. And that means that you have a right still to publish your full manuscript anywhere in, in the journal, whether the journal is suggested by the conference committee or you are free to select any journal as per your convenience as well. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Vikas. Uh, Professor Sudhir and also uh, Disa for your insightful answers. So as the last comment, I would like to have a comment um, before winding up the Q&A session. Yes. Um, so uh, one of the pa participants, uh, Sasna Salih, so she is stating that it is uh, really an enlightening webinar series. I highly appreciate the collective efforts of the distinguished scholars and Emerald for such great service. Thank you very much, everyone. So thank you very much everyone joining today. So now I would like to invite Professor Sudhir in order to uh, proceed with the vote of thanks and in not. It is over to you, Professor Sudhir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Jayanta Devasiri. Well, it has been a great collaboration amongst three of us, University of Sabal Gamua uh, in Sri Lanka, Amara, and the Gulf Medical University. And we tried from year on year, that's how we can make it better, crisp, and impactful for all of you. And together we serve to the community, and not only us, the guest who has contributed, like Professor Arya, irrespective of their and their busy schedule, they've taken out some time. So first of all, I would like to pay my thank to the Faculty of Management Studies, Sabargamuwa University, Sri Lanka, especially my colleague, Professor Jayantar Devas, Professor Atula Yanapala for their wonderful initiatives and bringing all of us together to be a part of this great initiative and creating some difference and impact to the society. I really, really appreciate the, um, and we are very, very highly thankful, in fact, uh, both the knowledge uh, partners, University of Sabar Gamua and Gulf Medical University are highly thankful to the Emerald Publishing, our colleagues, um, Disa Lakanpal, Sangeeta Menon and other colleagues from the Emerald side for arranging all the hospitality for such a webinar and we really um, uh, appreciate the efforts that they put in organizing and handling at the back end side. Great job done. Um, Disha and Sangeeta, it is really, really good. Um, we, we are highly thankful to all the speakers who came. We, we had eight sessions, and in these eight sessions, we have oh, uh, speakers uh, like Amila, uh, Professor Amila Jabatane, uh, myself and Professor Devasri have also been, uh, we both have also delivered um, uh, session, one session each. And uh, Professor Amit Sankar, Professor Jagrup Singh, who is an our other colleague, um, uh, Dr. Kasif Sai, Professor Shanti Gopal Krishna, and Dr. Vikas Arya. We, we really, really thank to all our eminent speakers who took out time from their busy schedule and contributed their best knowledge to this venture. And a great kudos to the wonderful audience um, who have been throughout with us and being a part of this journey. Well, you're going to get the certificates and you'll go also get a certificate of completion if you have attended 50% of the sessions. So there are certificates for each of the sessions and course completion certificate for those who have already completed 50% of it. So please remember that you're going to get the course of completion certificate only if you have minimum 50% of the attendance throughout. Otherwise you get the participation certificate for, for the session. It has been a great experience, a very learning and enriching experience for myself and might be in the future we'll be able to bring more knowledge, more wisdom for our authors and we'll be able to uh, stay connected. So keep on reading Emerald journals. There are a lot of journals, whether these are related to case studies or multidisciplinary journals, gold open access journal. One of us, our, myself and Professor we also have a journal, South Asian Journal of Marketing, which is called Open Access Journal with Emerald. So keep on reading, keep on reviewing, keep on learning, and keep a different start. I mean, keep on making a difference, keep on making 
the impact on the societal and scholarly community. Best wishes and thank you so much each one of you for being a part of this journey. We really appreciate that you contributed to our initiative and our idea. Thank you so much, everyone. Yes, thank you very much, everyone, before handing it over to Disa. So we are going to meet up again on a TOT program, train of trainer program. So that is mainly focusing on supervision, review, how to conduct a review, then how to write a grant. So that will be a different program, TOT program, train of trainer program, probably by end of January or uh, mid of February. So we are going to meet up again. So thank you very much. This it is over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sudhir Rana, for your wonderful words. All the speakers, uh, Professor Devasri, thank you. Uh, without uh, you all, this, uh, this I, I don't think we will be able to do it alone. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, audience. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll see you again. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Thank you. Great weekend to you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.